Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who dat? It is game week for your New Orleans Saints. They'll open up preseason action this weekend at home against Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, our buddy Ross Jackson from uh, Locked On Saints that practiced today for Little Camp Report. How are you, man? Hey, buddy. Doing great, man. Glad to be here with you. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks for the time. Uh, does Always. the fact that it is a game week change anything this week for the Saints and how they operate? Yeah, it, it actually did. Uh, what we actually got to see them do a little bit more of today that we haven't seen a ton of before were situational drills. Uh, and so we've seen them do a little bit of red zone work and stuff like that. But today we got to see them do some third down work as well as some uh, two-minute drill work. Now, when they did their two-minute drill work today, they did it as if it was at the end of the first half, not at the end of the game. Uh, so the, the goal was a little bit different. It was meant to sort of you know, press Derek Carr, press the offense, be able to get in and out. But then the goal, it felt, felt like, was to get to uh, field goal range and get a field goal in, which kind of gave Blake Grouping an opportunity there with that kicker battle continuing. So uh, that was kind of the, the fix for that. But, I mean, I would say that all three of those, in terms of the field goal, two-minute drill work, as well as the third down work, were advantage to the offense, which was nice because it's been a bit of a defensive-heavy performance these last few days. Um, let's go to, to some of the, um, the the personnel questions because I know there's been injuries on the offensive line. So how have they sort of mixed and matched to, to, uh, to fill in those gaps? Yeah, they've moved around the offensive line a lot. They've kind of thrown out the first, second, third team convention. And instead, they just kind of rotate guys in. So you'll see, you know, one lineup is your starting lineup for two snaps. And then, you know, you'll see a couple of guys go out, a couple of guys come in for the next two snaps, and that'll change into second team, so on and so forth. But today, I think we saw the starting line that I think could potentially be the same starting offensive line uh, come week one. And that was with Trevor Penning at left tackle, James Hurst at left guard, and then Eric McCoy, uh, Cesar Ruiz, and Ryan Ramchek. And while those guys were out there, Derek Carr had a lot of time. Things were kept pretty clean, a little bit more cleanly than we've seen uh, over the past. Uh, Cesar Ruiz got a little bit of trouble from Brian Brzee. Uh, Trevor Penning got a little bit of trouble from Carl Granderson throughout the day. But outside of you know a couple of plays here and there, I thought that they held up pretty well with that starting lineup. But they rotate heavily on that offensive line to get everybody opportunities to work with every quarterback. You like Penning uh, week one starting left tackle? I do, yeah. Okay. And, and, and some, of that, some of that has to do, too, with how long, with the question mark of, how long uh, will Andrus Pete be injured? You know, because you don't necessarily want to be in a situation where you have uh, you're effectively your third left guard in, and then the guy that's, you know, you're hoping is going to be, you know, a good piece to move around in James Hurst or potentially even your starting left guard uh, while Trevor Penning, you know, just kind of sits on the bench and continues to develop. I think you want to get Trevor Penning out there. And he's had some moments where, like, he's got some growth to do in pass protection and all that, but. After a while, you got to you kind of have to say, okay, is he going to develop on the bench or is he going to develop by getting reps? And after a certain point, you got to make that decision. Interesting. Uh, Ross Jackson's with us on Twitter at Ross Jackson. Nola, be sure you're subscribed up to Locked On Saints. Uh, if you're not, uh, you're just doing it wrong. Um, let's flip it over to the defensive line. Um, I'm fascinated by guys like you mentioned, Brzee. I'm fascinated by by Foskey to see how some of these young guys are going to do. Um, thought on on how they did today and how it's gone so far. Yeah, Brazil in particular had a really fantastic bull rush right up the middle up against uh, Cesar Ruiz that would have put you know Derek Carr under some real pressure and and that's really what you want to see from these guys and with Todd Grant from the new defensive line coordinator or defensive line coach excuse me that's come in recently is sort of you know helping these guys become a bit more of an attacking aggressive front and a lot of that that they want to be able to win with is going to come from the interior guys like Colin Saunders and. You know, Brian Brzee, as well as, of course, Nathan Shepard. But I think Brian Brzee can be the tone setter there because he's just such a wrecking ball. And he's so much quicker, faster, more elusive, more of a finesse guy than you expect at his size. Seems to take everybody by surprise. I asked Eric McCoy what he's most impressed by when he's looking at Brian Brzee. And outside of the mention of, you know, his ability to move at his size, he mentioned his move set, which, you know, in terms of the pass rushing moves that he has and his ability to string those together. That's pretty good praise for a guy coming into the NFL where usually you're trying to teach them more moves, 
teach them how to string moves together. Hey. Foskey, on the other hand, is you know not doing poorly, but is being isn't showing the same way in pass rush because he's learning a new position. Effectively, he's learning a new technique. He's playing what's called four I, which is kind of that inside shoulder of the tackle that he's lining up over, which is a little bit more of a run stopping side. So you don't really get the opportunity to get a lot of pass rush there. Hmm. But when he's able to get into the pass rush, he's certainly noticeable because he's winning with speed. Um, what about Peyton Turner? Peyton Turner, uh, last year around this same time, I asked him how he would describe his camp, and he he leaned on the idea that he was flashy but not consistent. Today, I asked him. You made you just you it reminded him how he described his camp last year. How would you call it? How would you consider it this year? And he said that he was, he's a lot more consistent, and he's playing with a lot more confidence. And it's it's not just his observation; we're seeing it too. I write down ninety eight just about every practice. And it might be, you know, three plays one day, one play or another, but you're still seeing it constantly, consistently getting in the backfield, consistently being disruptive. I think that he's making a good case for himself. I still think that starting defensive end role opposite Cam Jordan is going to go to Carl Granderson ultimately, at least to start the season. But Peyton Turner is making sure he's going to get some reps here in 2023. Um, a couple more for you. Ross Jackson is with us. Um, I wanted to ask you about running back, especially considering the injury to, you know, Benjamin and they're bringing in Kareem Hunt for a workout. Uh, is that just a, a camp body situation, or are they, they looking for a legit maybe number three running back for those first three weeks when Kamara's out? Yeah, I think it's the latter for sure. I really do think that they're looking for that guy while Kamara's out. I, I thought for a second that maybe Kirk Merritt had that inside track, but Kareem Hunt would offer a lot of competition there, um, especially as somebody that has already proven as an NFL veteran that can – you know, run as well as, you know, be used in the red zone and be used in the passing game and kind of all the different things he can do. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, look, Kareem Hunt's probably not going to sign a minimum deal anywhere. So, you know, he might sign here in New Orleans. He might sign elsewhere. His visit officially begins tonight. So I don't think we'll hear anything today. Uh, but we'll see how things progress going into tomorrow when they're, you know, the Saints are off of practice tomorrow. So they have a lot of opportunity to spend time with Kareem Hunt. Um, Kirk Merritt did leave practice today with a hamstring. Um, I don't know. We don't know the severity of it yet. The expectation is that it's not serious um, or, you know, so we'll have to see what happens there, but that could be another thing that even opens the door further for Kareem Hunt and further solidifies the need at that position for New Orleans. I, I guess before you go, I have to ask about Anthony Barr as well. The injury to, to Andrew Dowell has left the saints where, who are already mm -hmm. thin at linebacker. Now I'm just paper thin. So, um, maybe a thought on, on that linebacker position group and, and the possibility of adding a guy like Barr? Yeah, I think adding Barr would be a really smart choice by New Orleans, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, look, this is the team that brought in Nigel Bradham when he was 83 years old, and they brought in James Laurinaitis when he was 100-something. And so, like, they consistently looked at those veteran linebackers. Um, Anthony Barr, much, much younger than the guys that they would typically bring in during training camp. Um, and is a little bit more of a pass rusher as well. So it kind of fits the Caden Ellis mold, which they know worked really well last year. So I think if you're looking for a guy that can come in and kind of do all the things that Caden Ellis did, Anthony Barr is actually a really good choice, in my opinion, as opposed to otherwise you're looking at kind of splitting the responsibilities between Zach Bond and DeMarco Jackson. But maybe a part of what made Caden so good in that role is because you weren't really sure what he was going to be doing when he was on the field if you're an offense. And Anthony Barr offers that same type of versatility in disguise. Uh, he is on Twitter at Ross Jackson Nola. You'll give him a follow. Of course, the uh, Locked on Saints podcast. Subscribe up wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate it as always, man. Thank you. Always a pleasure, buddy. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.